How's it going? My name is Sam and in this video, I wanna share a tool that I use in Final Cut Pro to very quickly balance my audio levels so that they remain consistent throughout the entire video. Before we get into that though, I feel like going on a little bit of an adventure. The weather's pretty dope today and I think it would be a shame if we didn't take advantage of it. So come on, let's go. So we're at a little spot called Shacktown. It's a little waterfall river area out in Yadkinville, not too far away from where I live in downtown Winston. I've only been here a handful of times, but you can really get a sense of peace here. I think it's something that we could all really use a little more of in 2020. The tool we're gonna be looking at today is the audio limiter effect. An audio limiter prevents the volume from exceeding a predetermined range. We can use this to raise the volume of the quieter parts of a clip without making the louder parts too loud. It's super easy to use, so let's jump into Final Cut so I can show you how to set it up. And then at the end of the video, I wanna talk a little bit about why I use a limiter over something like a compressor. Here we are in Final Cut. I've got a raw clip on the timeline. Let's take a listen to it. So we're at a little spot called Shacktown. It's a little waterfall river area out in Yadkinville, not too far away from where I live in downtown Winston. It's a little quiet. Take a look at the audio meter in the corner. I like my dialogue audio to bounce between negative six and negative 12 dB. Now I could raise the gain to get it closer to that ballpark range like this. So we're at a little spot called Shacktown. It's a little waterfall river area out in Yadkinville, not too far away from where I live in downtown Winston. That's not too bad, but if you notice on the audio bar, some of the louder parts of the clip are getting too loud for my taste. Let's reset our gain knob back to zero and try raising the volume with the limiter effect instead. Apply the limiter to the clip and open up the control panel. You'll see a couple settings here. Let's start with the output level. The output level determines the maximum output for our audio. What we are telling the limiter is, hey, whenever the audio gets louder than this number, reduce it so it doesn't get louder than this number. Like I said before, I like my audio between negative six and negative 12 dB. I don't mind if it gets a little louder than this, but I know I don't want it to get more than negative three dB. So I'll set the output level to negative three dB. Now, let's check out the look ahead. This tells the limiter how far ahead to analyze the audio. Setting this higher will make the limiter apply the reduction before the maximum level is reached, creating a smoother transition. Now, that seems nice in theory, but it's unnatural for dialogue. We want the limiter to kick in only when our audio gets too loud, not before. I set mine to zero milliseconds, but the default two milliseconds is fine too. It's kind of up to you, but I would keep it on the short side. Next up is the release knob. This is used to set the time it takes for the limiter to stop processing after the volume falls below the output level. The longer we set the time, the longer the reduction stays applied. If it's too high, it'll create an unnatural pumping sound. For dialogue, I keep mine anywhere from 50 to 250 milliseconds. You can set it to what sounds best for your ears, but I'm gonna go with 250 milliseconds. The last control knob is the gain effect. This increases the level of the input signal. To get my gain right, I like to play the audio and I actually watch the output signal. I'll keep applying gain until the output signal is continuously hitting that output limit we set. Once I see my audio keeps hitting that limit, I'll dial back the gain slowly until I'm bouncing comfortably between negative six and negative 12 dB. The human voice needs some level of dynamics to sound natural. We don't want our audio output hitting that threshold all the time. We just want that threshold to control the loudest parts. The final setting on the limiter is the mode setting. By default, this will be set to precision mode. For dialogue, I think it's best to switch this to legacy mode. Legacy mode lets us use the soft knee effect. This will make our reduction smoother and less abrupt when the limiter kicks in. That's how I like to set up my limiter. Let's take a listen to the clip and see how it sounds. So we're at a little spot called Shacktown. It's a little waterfall river area out in Yadkinville, not too far away from where I live in downtown Winston. I think that sounds pretty good. The quiet parts are much louder and the reduction on the loud parts sounds natural. And that's how I use a limiter in Final Cut Pro. Now, I'd like to have a little conversation about why I use a limiter over something like, say, a compressor. A compressor is sort of like a limiter, except instead of uh, stopping the audio at a designated threshold, it reduces the volume proportionally. This reduction is displayed as a ratio such as two to one. That means for every two decibels the audio rises above the designated level, the compressor will reduce the output so it only increases by by one decibel. 2 dB above the threshold becomes 1 dB above the threshold instead. It's a little confusing to explain quickly. I'll leave a link to Apple's explanation page in case you're interested in learning more. After doing a little research, it seems like the compressor is the industry standard tool for dialogue. So 
why use a limiter? Personally, I like the limiter because it's simpler and to me, the results are just as good for my purposes. My voice isn't incredibly dynamic, so I don't need any kind of detailed compression. I just need to be able to control those peaks and make sure my threshold doesn't go above that negative three dB range. Using the limiter with the softening effect does more than a good enough job for my purposes. I encourage you to play with both and see which one works better for your sound. I want these videos to inspire conversation, so if you have a question or think there's something I could have done better, like use a compressor, feel free to leave a comment down below. I try to respond to as many as possible. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Really appreciate you watching, and I will see you again real soon.